Howdy, peeps and peoples. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. All right, what we're doing today is it's Sunday. Pretty laid back morning. Got up this morning. I was like, man, I need to do something. You know, so uh, come out to the mill. I've got this issue I wanted to share with y'all. I got this 308D Caterpillar Mini Excavator. I love the sum of buck, and the more we use it, the more I fall in love with it, the more uses I need to do with it. I'm finding out. One of them we do around here is stack cross ties. Now when you're stacking cross ties, I've been using this dirt bucket. It's a three foot dirt bucket to come with it with the teeth. I like these teeth. Uh, it's a love-hate relationship. They're wide, so they're hard on the daggone doodad. So I just put bolts and all of them. I don't know if that's good or not. Uh, excavator operators out there, let me know what's up. The main job I've been doing with this dude here late recently that actually is paying the bills on this dude is stacking cross ties. And this bucket's not cutting it, stacking cross ties. I like it, but then I don't like it. These buck, these teeth, my, my problems are these teeth are biting into the ties and messing up the ties and stuff. I need a just a flat surface to grab the ties with, number one. Number two, I don't need to rattly teeth. I do need this thumb comes down and meets the bucket so I do need the dimensions to stay the same here because that function of the bucket works good. It'd be nice to lose the back part of the bucket because when I'm in tight spots, I keep donking. Yeah, I take a chance on donking it on things. Uh, so I don't need that. I just need a thin, slender thing that does the thing, stacks the ties, do the mess. So instead of investing in the bucket, things are tight. Those of you in the sawmill industry knows how tight things are right now, so we're not spending money. But what I did do is raided a junk pile and I come up with this. So I come out to work this morning, I found these old sprockets, cause I could, if I'm gonna make a piece here, I'm gonna make my own daggone doodad, tie stacking apparatus. ass. And these I'm gonna use my, my pen collars, they're straight bore sprockets, anybody that's been around stuff, uh, let me tell you, I hate straight bore sprockets, they're just good at tearing up shafts. So, I found some old straight bore sprockets and there ain't no better use for them than the present. So I'm gonna use them for my collars, I found this inch and 15 16 so wallered out something or another we've took it off. Look how rotted and pitted it is. And it's even got a key cut in it. So, so if we get to spinning out too bad with our bucket, we got a keyway. Uh, old piece of two inch uh, tube. And this here is gonna be pretty crucial. This is our body. It's gonna be a three by five by three eighths wall tubing. This, <laughs> I just found it laying out back. I thought, by God, I know what I can use for that. That's going to be your coupling. So these are going on this. This is going to weld to this. This is going to weld to this thing. And then someday in the future, I'm going to take a torch and bore whores in it. Whores in it. I'm going to bore whores in it. And then I'm going to make it to where it takes a cutting edge. Now, I know that's a mouthful. I know that sounds confusing. But come in here with me, and we'll see what we come of it with it. We will see what becomes of it yeah all right i'm suiting up for welding all right i'm suiting up for welding one thing i wanted to share with everybody today sunday and i told mommy i'm gonna be relaxed today so i wore my new coveralls because i won't wear them to work because i figure everybody make fun of me because they're new so today i'm gonna wear them on here and you all make fun of me if you want to but also told mommy i'm not getting out of my house slippers today <laughs> gonna be a laid back day old buddy i ain't gonna get out of the house slippers so let me get started, and, I'll, and I'm going to turn my, radio, my audio book on. i got a great audio book I've been listening to, so I'm going to uh, turn my audio book on. So I'll just capture things and maybe do B-roll and then maybe talk over it. Do narration, maybe, per se, or else. Or else? <laughs> hard to see what I'm putting together right now. Well, what I'm working on right there, the two circles there, these are the two ears, the bucking ears. <laughs> these are what's going to mount. The pins are going to go through them holes, and that's what's going to, the pin grabber's going to grab. 
to make this attachment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut them out, and then, and what they do is they kind of give me some dimension California for the nucleus of what he calls the Californian durability, and then they also give me plenty of a perpendicular area to weld to. And this here, this here what I'm working on is gonna be the legs of it. <clears throat> Now the tubes are three eighths wall, uh, four by six tubes, I believe. So they're they're actually the same material I make log trailer bumpers out of. Three eighths wall. It's pretty thick, pretty good tube. So and them are them two little pieces of inch and a half tubing in there. They're just going to be a little bit of a spacer to add some dimension to it to give it. They're not going to really do a lot. Um, they're kind of just holding things apart and adding a little dimension to it and a little bit of stability and support. You'll see later when I get to, when, when things get farther together. But So here's the legs, and then uh, I'm going to tack all them together and get that stuff to where they, they hold steel to their cells so I don't have to worry about anything getting warped or nothing funky happening like that. And then now I'm going to put these ears on, and there, there you see the hose for the pin grabber. So you can kind of see how it's starting to take a little bit of a shape. And I'm kind of just eyeballing it. I'm not eye. Well, I'm kind of eyeballing it. Just mostly making sure it fits perpendicular. Because I cut out my hose a little bit big. As long as I, you know, if you, you don't want to do trim work. When you're roughing in a house. You do rough openings and the framing goes pretty, you know, everything goes pretty. But when you get get ready to mount the doors and the windows and stuff, that's when you're going to get real precise. And, and, that, and that kind of line of thinking is I'm not, I'm not really getting a lot of tools out and you're really getting precise till it comes time to put A, the uh, tip on it, and B, or, which would mostly B, not really the tip as much as the pin, the pins, the pin grabber grabs has to meet with the uh, cutting edge, so to speak, with lack of a better term in this situation. It's got to all meet up right. So you bring your thumb down, you grab a ties or something, you bring your thumb down, everything meets together. So, But, but you don't want to take every single piece of the build and make every single thing exactly perfect, perfect. Because most of that stuff you're never going to see if it's off a 32nd or 16th, you're never going to see that in a million years using this thing. What, what matters is the business end and the uh, where the pin grabber goes. So here I am lining up the other one. I cut a, a fillet or whatever you're supposed to call it, a fillet or whatever, out of the uh, tubes down there or camber. So then this, this radius around this I-beam is going to fit in there perfect. Okay, let's take a look at this. We got this started and everything started and going. Um, we'll do the collars probably dead last. Now I need to run out here on the end and come up with a dimension. The dimension. Dot. Dimension. Of what we need to come back. Because we're going to write this out. It's going to be 9 degrees coming up and running down. We're going to run 9 degrees from about it here-ish. 30, cent 30 centimeters. What is my brain? It's cooked. 30 inches down to here and we need to and I want to match this angle of this bucket so what we're going to do is take your speed square and put it on right here this will be close enough. that thing's pretty good yeah boy yeah so it runs at about well I think it's right at 45 inch 45 degrees well that's simple enough so we got to make us a 45 degree slope a dope on the front of this here and then put her uh flat bar in the end. now we're going to operate with flat bar for now i'll get a cutting edge coming but uh i don't want to spend much money right now so but before we get through mulch season i'll get a cutting edge coming to put on it for now we're just going to cut the slope on it put the uh cut this piece in half and then I'm gonna put both pieces on because I want to be able to reach. It's a long story, but I want to be able to pull the ties in and also reach and shove ties away from me. So I want cutting edge sticking out both ends of this. And by the time I put a 45 slope on there, it's gonna be well over six inches. And that's gonna soak up one of them, which I'm gonna leave more inches out. 
to uh, mount a cutting edge to. So one end's only have like four inches sticking out. What do we got on these? Man, I don't know why my brain, sometimes it's just cooked. And I don't do drugs, so I don't know why it's cooked. All right, five inches. We'll stick it out five inches, which is quite a bit unsupported, unsupported inches. Might have to come up with some kind of... No, nah, I better drop that back to four if we're gonna hold up. Five's a little bit much for... Now, this is T1. This is T1 steel, so it's not... The push factor is not high in this steel, but uh, it's still thin. It's only 5 8 thick or something. I think it's 5 8. No, it's only half. Woo, she's pretty thin. I've been at her for a few hours now. I'm going to wind her down. I've got to this point. Uh, this is kind of the part of it that's going to go against the uh, thumb. So this is the part you'll see from the cab. Uh, I think I like it. It's a little thin, but when we put the cutting edge on it later, and I will probably weld the cutting edge on, so that'll add strength to it. I think after that, I'll be satisfied with it in strength. I'll weld it really good right here, so that way there's a lot of strength there, and then when we put the cutting edge on, It'll it'll add some it'll add some dimension to that. So uh, yeah, I think as far as strength and you know the cockeyed like a diagonal stress load will be alleviated through this. I had a piece of scrap iron from the carriage project we done this then this week. I just put that in there, so that's tied in real good to everything. So it's going to make it really really strong and durable without adding much weight and adding much bulk. I don't want much bulk. I want this thing to be kind of small. Because what, what you do when you're making ties is we spin a lot of them around because where you stack them on the bundle, you'll have to cut the ends off. So I wanted to keep something smaller than this large bucket to where I can spin something around on a pendulum right quick. And this thing will add to that. Plus have the back side, so this is the bottom, like the bottom part of the bucket. You could reach back with this and grab a tie up close to you, a row of ties and slide them back away from you. So I think I think it's, and and when we started out it seemed silly to be stacking cross ties this thing but as we get better and things advance man it gets you spend more of your time grading the things than you do stacking so but i'm learning now a few of the shortcomings to the t to the uh to the task so i can work around them and kind of make them a little bit even uh quicker by that means and the idea to make it quick is I got a lot of other jobs to do. So I'm wanting to keep this a part-time task for our sawmill. Uh, Perry's actually starting to do some of it, and he's he'll he'll get he'll get pretty good at it eventually. So I will have help and the sort, which is key in my position, somebody in my position to find is to get some help to do this. But uh, for now. Usually when I start a task, I kind of go through the engineering stage and I kind of like want to do it myself, talk to everybody because I'm going to have to weld, modify things and stuff. And once we get a pattern going, get it up and going, get the system to where it's like Elon Musk in a tree, you know, the big tree. We get the trunk and everything and I'm down to the little bitty tiny leaves. Well, if we get busy, get cut, caught, covered up with stuff, I can move on. Next guy in place. He can handle that. But in this situation, I think I always stay close to this. I'm kind of partial to excavators and swing machines and feller bunchers and stuff like that. I think I'll stay close to a sorting machine. But who knows? Who knows what the future brings? I, like I said, uh, eight months ago, if, I, if, I, if you'd have told me I wouldn't be cutting timber every day, I'd have told you you was full of mess. And here I am. I ain't cut a tree in two and a half months. <laughs> all right howdy howdy guys we're back here monday had a rough start this morning uh <laughs> barn cleaner issues uh so here we are here <clears throat> i've did some welding stuff on it i got a lot of the i did a lot of welding to it <clears throat> this morning it's been about an hour and a half welding uh i started on this i ground out my i cut my sprockets and torched them out and ground me a flat spot on them 
where they mount flat down on my frame here. Uh, I'm kind of mounting that in. Just want to show you all that a little bit. It's it's looking good, feeling good. I think it's gonna be good. Hi. Hi. And here's mommy. Hello. My hair's a mess. Your hair's a mess. Okay. Hi. My hair's my hair's a mess hair? too. <laughs> Whose hair looks better? I don't know. Your shine <laughs> shines. <laughs> All right, but I'll get I'll get this welded up and I'll let y'all fill the ball back in. Okay, now those of you probably <clears throat> looking into this a little bit and thinking on us, you're probably wondering how am I gonna make all that meat to where it closes on the thumb straight and everything works out straight. Here's my hillbilly. In a minute, quick thing to do. I laid this up flat to where I got this almost level. It's off just a smidge, but it don't matter. Well, it actually does matter. Let me level that up. Okay, now I leveled her up both, both this way and this way. So set up a tripod, two points here, one point there, and it's all level. So what I got to do is I'm going to match them pins. I ain't going to worry about all this fabricated stuff. I'm going to match them pins with this plate. And I'm going to match the, the heights of them running this way with a level like this. So they'll be level this way uh level this way and then i'll use my speed square to square them up this way and make sure they're they're square that way so everything should be square as long as i don't bump it all right so let me tack it together and get her going here That's what it's gonna look like. Now I gotta weld it all in. I weld it all in and we'll fit the thing and see what it does. All right, we're done. I got it all welded. I mean, I might trim and do some things later. You know, these wings are pretty wide and I'm gonna leave them points on there for now. But if they start cutting concrete or anything weird over there, I'll cut them off. But I wanna leave them on there in case I need them to bump around a tie or something. Um, so let's hook it up and see what we got. See how well it hooks up.
doesn't do the floor any good. About to get them scratches out of the floor. Well, let's go try it out. It fits good, works good, meets up with the thumb good. I like it. I tell you, I got to think about cause and effect. We do a lot of stuff out here in the mill that just one thing affects the other that affects the other, and it just, this ain't, you know, I cut timber for years, had a blast doing it. Still want to go do it some. But uh, this here is a different type of stimulation. It's more mental stimulation. Um, learn a lot. But uh, so built this bunk the other day just out of scrap parts sitting around. I just drove around. <laughs> Didn't even have a tape measure. I just drove around with a wheel loader. Just picked up stuff that I thought I needed and just dumped in a pile at the shop. And then throw this bunk together because <clears throat> what we get is we'll get multiple links in our tie pile at a time now i've thought about sorting in the y'all log yard getting the 12s where we don't get the 12s with and i'm like ah the mill the thing about the reason this is put out here is because this the ties are important i won't let anybody think the ties aren't important but they're a second hand they can be a bottleneck so the thing about ties is that is your bottleneck that that yellow guard in there that's your resaw the resaw and the head saw that is what sets the speed of the flow through that whole building now anything ahead or behind them two rigs that slows them two rigs down a few seconds them seconds you lose all day long you'll never gain them seconds back so you don't want anything involved in there that has a potential of slowing them down that ain't absolutely positively necessary and one is these ties and separating links for these ties or separating uh uh or stopping to chop them off and stuff like that when it's you know like a lot of people do uh i don't want that i want them away from the mill and out of, out of, out of harm's way they can sit here till, till the cows come home i didn't know the cows was missing but anyways they can sit here and do their thing and then we when we get to it as a side project and it's a part-time job i went all week last week of that cylinder we had a cylinder had a little mistake on the end of the boom tore up the cylinder had to fix it but uh <clears throat> anyways off over that so we're just now getting doing last week's ties it's sunday i'm here by myself and i want to get this video for y'all because of our tie stacker that son of a buck turned out looking great and it works awesome it works way better than i expect to work now it could look better it needs painted and stuff like that but i mean it works great i'm gonna set y'all up and let y'all watch and i'm gonna stack some of these ties but i just wanted to let y'all know i'm going into two bunks and do different bunks doing that sort of thing but let me set you all up and we'll whack away at it
So one thing, I don't know how to get into this and explain this to somebody that, well, that was like me five months ago that didn't know nothing about ties. Uh, well, two or three, more like four or five, you know, five months ago, didn't know nothing about ties, and, and I still don't know, uh, I'm still no professional by no means. And my tie guy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they say if you're going to do the main thing of being productive when you get into something is to batch. So what we're doing here is batching. All these ties are going in a chunk, in a in a queue, and they're sitting there in their queue. And then when I come in to work up these ties, we're doing them all in a batch. So I reach up, and I guesstimate, which experience helps. Uh, I've been doing this for a little bit now. How many ties to pull down off the stack up there. And then you scatter them out so you can grade them. Now, they get pushed together. But it's kind of like grading logs and taking up logs. They get pushed together some, but you don't want them pushed together. You'd rather have a hole in between them. But through the natural happenstance, they get kind of pushed together. And it does give you a disadvantage when grading. Now, rougher ties are do a worse job at. And these are oak ties. The majority of these are. So, they'll be pretty good ties. So, I'm pretty kind and they sold out the oak sold out pretty good lumber so i'm pretty confident that these will be so the ties that do get pushed together and stuff i'm kind of kind of taking a chance on you know if i miss something you know if i miss a a bit of a, a rotten spot or a uh, uh extra pith something something that got cut out too close to the heart got to the edge of a tie and cut out and left some pith or some pith's at the center of your tree you know, and it looks nasty, especially on a tie or a board. But so I'm laying them out so I can get out there with my tape measure and my marker and grade these things. So now I'm measuring defects and see now, you know, 80% of the ties in that row you're looking at is going to be regular railroad ties. But now the longer ones, if they grade out better and they're longer, they can be used as switch ties and what a switch tie is it's uh, you when you take when two when a train splits apart and that's when the rails split split apart at a switching area the ties will get long for a while while the rails switching and then finally it'll get out far enough apart from each other when the train grows away from each other that it turns back into two sets of ties and two sets of rails but for a short period of time you're gonna have four sets of rails on one single bed of ties so that's what these switch ties are for and uh, their stipulation to them are stiffer and uh, I got to be more careful when doing switch ties because you get by with less because the rail could be anywhere on a switch tie so you they kind of tie they kind of grade them tighter whereas a normal railroad tie the RBA or rail bearing area uh, they're pretty st st stickler about you know but some of the other parts of the tie is less much so so you can get by with some things in a, in a regular railroad tie that you can't get by with on a switch tie. So that all goes into the grading and stuff. And then I get back in and that, see that 11 footer there? That's going to be an 11 foot switch tie. And I'm throwing that over on the uh, switch tie rack there. That's my long rack for switch ties. And the other rack over there is where 80% of them goes in. That's your regular tie rack for your regular railroad ties. And... <clears throat> It's hard to explain a lot of what's going on here as far as the shapes of some things and the ergonomics to some of this stuff, the way it's put together. But it works really, it's really getting to where it's working good. Now my hydraulics are a little cool because I only started this up basically. It's a cool day and I only started this up on a Sunday to kind of make this YouTube video because tomorrow... Uh, my buddy's coming in, gonna help me. And uh, uh, an old an old friend I used to work with uh, is coming in to help me, and he's gonna start doing ties with me a little bit. And uh, I wanted to save a plenty for. I have so many things to do. I got to kind of pick my battles. So I'm like, well, I, I didn't push towards the end of last week to get these ties caught up because he's coming in. I'm like, well, he he can get. He's gonna do run a loader and saw and band and stuff for me. So I could basically come down here and crank out a bunch of ties and get back up in the yard or 
do whatever I got to do while he's working them up and stuff to where I can be back to, I got to get to where I'm diversifying, delegating some of my tasks because I don't have time anymore. I'm out of time at a, at a consistent, pretty consistent rate anymore, it seems like. Um, there's a lot to do, and we got a lot of good people. I just got to disperse some of the load of this, some of this work around to where we can all work together to get everything done and accomplished for the good of the whole company. See, there's one that the, the pith center come out on. Now, I'm going to push that one because I'm going to cut the last two feet off. That's a 10-foot tie. I'm going to cut that last ugly two feet off and, and hope that eight feet of good is going to carry it. Eight feet of not too bad is going to be all right. But that's a pushy tie. I was push, being pushy on it. And these switch tie bundles weigh more. So I'm told, uh, the boss man told me to... Uh, put four rows high on switch ties and I, but I can go five rows high on a regular set of a regular tie bundle and my even end board only comes up three rows so on a switch tie bundle that leaves you one row you can hang cutoffs off the other end see this ain't been cut to length yet I forgot to share it with everybody I then take them and cut them with a chainsaw and cut them to length after they get thrown in these bundles because these bundles are you're looking at 10 foot ties 12 foot tie everything thrown in this thing and, and, and graded and stacked in different manners because they're going to get even ended and cut off after they get bundled that's going to be done later right now i'm grading them and stacking them carefully to where they can be cleaned up with a chainsaw and is there a better way of doing this stuff yeah there's probably a way better way but the main thing, is, like I said, is to keep this mill up and running. It ain't to get great at stacking ties. Uh, I don't want to be bad at stacking ties per se, but I'm not. That's not the top of my priority list right now. Getting them done is the top of my priority list right now, and then getting not getting in trouble with the boss man. And I'm going to polish this bundle off, and we're going to band two bundles, which is great about having the two bunks. We'll band our two bundles. And you can see little things I'm doing. You can see where this thing is so much better. I mean, it's way better than a bucket. It worked out better than I ever expected. The guys was even bragging on me the other day. It's like, daggone, they were bragging on the thing the other day. It's like, my God, it, you are just banging these things out. You know, at, at the point I'm doing this video here, it's been done. The tie thing's been done for about two weeks. I'm just now getting to uh, finishing this video up. So, I mean, it's over the bucket. It is hard to believe it's that much. I mean, there's there's benefits to it. I, ha I had a vision of what I wanted. See this here little maneuver right here where you just flop it around and use the backside? You can't do that with a bucket worth of hoot. And this is only, the plate's only two foot wide while the bucket was three and that was the extra width on the bucket was slowing me down when it comes to swapping a tie around or something you know i need some a small pendulum to spin it around and of course the bucket's flat on bottom it don't have that edge where you can flop it around the back side it's just so many things is coming together to make that in a teeth flop around where this cutting edge here is smooth and the teeth can cut into ties where this edge is smooth that don't cut into the ties you know it's just all together and it's lighter the thing about this tie situation is when it comes to the thumb and what's hanging off the end of it, you want it to be as light as absolutely possible. You don't want no extra weight hanging out there that you don't need because you're doing a lot of maneuvers and flopping and moving around, and, there, and it ain't like digging a hole with a bucket. You know, you're not, you're not trying to fill it up, you know, with one smooth move and then swing to the truck. You're trying to flop around and do a bunch of little knickknacks and a bunch of little x y and z maneuvers you know you don't want a bunch of weight hanging out on the end of that boom that don't need to go there if it don't need to be there get it off there you know this is very uh task oriented here for this specialized task you know and then you take that that's what's the beauty of an excavator or a wheel loader is then you get done you take that attachment off the end of it then you go back to doing something else whatever else you want to do with it
Boy, I love it. It's starting to get figured out. It's, it's starting to work quite well for us. This has been, all this stuff here is just scrap iron. Even the thing, even the tie attachment, scrap iron from the daggone boneyard. I didn't bought new steel for none of this crap. The part I love about that is, and you're making uh, financial, solid financial solutions from your daggone experience and intellect and stuff like that instead of daggone you're earning your keep that's what i'm trying to say and, and i love that I, I just get so addicted to that part of you know we're looking at this you, you can see this uh, scenario from multiple angles of you know uh theory of constraints toc you can look at this from uh uh, I'd say theory of constraints and investment investor standpoint of turning a lower product into something, you know, you can look at it as a <clears throat> time management to where you're setting up to where the tail is definitely not wagging the dog. You know, there's just so many ways that I just love this. I love this scenario, the scenario and this setup. I just... I just love it. I really do. You know, when you want something done that's adding value to something, and you want it to go and not fail, setting it up where it's easy to do the right thing, man, that makes a world of difference. I mean a world of difference. When you make it easier to do the right thing than it is to do the wrong thing, it's, it's, it's pretty much set up for success from the get-go, from the design. You know, it's just, I love it. I love it when something like that comes together. Now, you can do it in fancier ways. You can go big or go home, that mentality. You can say all that stuff you want, but the fact of the matter is this is flexible. This is market reactionary. I, I just love how this is set up and going. I just love it. Well, here's our log yard. It is now the 20 whatever of May, March, May, March, March. Uh, Tater put it up on the, and we need to get rid of this cottonwood and we need to get rid of this daggone cherry. We're stuck with this cottonwood and this cherry. We need to get it out of here. We're working on a, we need to get the stuff out of here. And we're also stuck with some pine. Some of it's getting pretty old. Now, that old stuff is deceiving. You crack into it, it won't look old. But we need it out of here. And we need the hickory out of here. And the reason I want them out of here so quick is because we ain't but a month or so around the corner of the loggers outrunning the sawmill again. And when we get to that scenario, I want to be as cl close to clean as possible. I'd like to actually outrun the loggers. I got a couple projects I want to do down there in the debark uh concave belt down there here's a hickory so y'all can see the hickory stack and we're gonna start on it this week we finally have got this aggravating stuff so and then the hearts out of the hickory would be ties but uh we finally got that aggravating stuff moved ready to get it out of here so and we're starting to build up red oak a little bit again it's slow but it's building up and red oak is actually one of the one of the uh species that's actually gaining a little bit it's getting not much traction but a little bit of traction poplar is still in the toilet gonna stay in the toilet we think so you know what they say about opinions and assholes die alone or I don't, I don't know something about opinions all right well thanks everybody for watching hit all the buddy buddy butt butt buttons and uh thank y'all i mean it by my heart thank you guys for watching and supporting us we got a bunch of good men and women here at the sawmill you know i like to be able to showcase them once in a while and say something about them good once in a while got a good one coming back uh maybe i'll get him on a video i, I got a history with this one coming back uh me and him's got a dark history actually and uh i'd like to share it with y'all but i don't know if he'll want me to do that so i have to check with him first and see if he'll but it was bad it was bad we had a really bad experience um but we'll see 
all right everybody thank you for watching have a good one likes and comments everything subscribe all that mess and thank you thank you guys you want anything you want any logger weight gear go to loggerweight.com thank you guys later on